Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this, um, uh, what day are we on here? Tenth day of, um, August, and it is Wednesday, and, uh, today's topic is, How do you need to be spoken to? Question mark. So, we'll get started on that here in a few minutes, but before I get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. Amen. So praise the Lord. And we're going to start with today's scripture song. And I was in the wrong month. So let me get to August and the 8th here. And we'll sing along here with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. And this is the um, the 10th. So, <clears throat> alright. So the 10th is Proverbs 27.1. Here we go. Oh. So, second. There we go. Proverbs 27, 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Amen. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Boast not thyself of tomorrow for no wish is not what the day may bring forth oh snap thyself of tomorrow thou no wish not what the day may bring forth oh snap thyself of tomorrow Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth oh. Amen. So make sure you get uh, settled in your heart today what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you. Amen. And he will save your soul. So praise the Lord. Alright, we'll put that aside and do that again towards the end of the Broadcast, but now it's time to get into today's topic um, for Wednesday, August 10th, and uh, I um, put that today was the 9th, but I'll have to correct that uh, at the end of the broadcast, so I um, apologize about uh, putting the wrong date up there, but today is the 10th, and today's topic is titled, How Do You Need to Be Spoken To?, and the passage is from 1 Corinthians 3, 1, and says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. First Corinthians three one, and so today's author is J O, and that would be the initials for. Uh, let's see here, J O. That would be uh, John O'Malley, and he's a missionary director from Kings Mountain, North Carolina. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of how do you need to be spoken to. Mm. All right, so he says here, uh, I am tickled when I watch adults talk uh, with babies, uh, powerful uh, men of ministry and um, merchandise get on their uh, hands and knees. Hold on a second, I can't put these glasses on. All right, let me make sure I'm reading this right. All right, so again, let me read this over. So it says, I am tickled when I watch adults talk with babies. Powerful men of ministry and merchandise get on their hands and knees, sit on the floor, and say the silliest sounds to little children. Oh, so he's talking about actual babies. <laughs> No-nonsense individuals cooing and babbling with an infant as the baby's level is humorous. <laughs> Uh, these men could communicate with great oratory and official tones, yet they communicate at the hearer's level. Paul couldn't communicate to the church in Corinth in spiritual tones because they were carnal as spiritual babies. He spoke to them at their growth level, adults by age, but infants in their attitudes and actions, thus envying strife and divisions. These were the indicators of their spiritual growth or lack of the same. And that's uh, verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 3. 
Uh, many Christians need to be spoken to as babes because they are carnal and infantile. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Do you envy others' accomplishments, abilities, and associations? Do you struggle for prestige, positions, or preferences? Do your words, works, and walk unite uh, or divide people and their allegiances and associations? Hmm. Uh, one really doesn't have to work at being carnal. It seems to come naturally, right? Sure does. Mm. Ouch. <laughs> Friend, we have been endued uh, with the supernatural. Thus, we can become mature, not babes. Uh, let me speak baby talk for a moment. <laughs> and he writes, grow up, in big bold letters. Yeah, ouch. Uh, we all need to grow up in some way. Uh, do you learn, uh, excuse me, do you lean toward carnal behavior? Grow up, he says. Uh, we have enough believers and babes in our churches today. Remember, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. First Peter 1, 15-16. Hmm. So, we could all take, uh, Key to this that we need to grow up in certain aspects and uh, we're always growing and learning from God's word and uh, amen so uh, let's take heed to this uh, as uh, not to be carnal and to be more spiritual and be more Christ-like amen so let's grow up grow up grow up <laughs> yikes all right so that's uh, was uh, a little convicting there challenging so amen all right that's the end of that, and, uh, whew, alrighty, so, uh, that's the Baptist bread, and I'll get into the topic for the Boots on the Ground devotional, and this is Boots on the Ground, Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier by Randy Wells, and the topic for today, for August 10th, is titled Declaration of Independence, and this takes place on August 10, 1776. And the passage is John 8, 36. It says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. And Jesus makes us free, so we're free indeed through the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. So praise God for that. All right, so let's get into this topic, Declaration of Independence. And he writes here, The beginning of the Revolutionary War was many things to many people for British soldiers serving in America. It was a, log, uh, a local up, uprising of British citizens living in Massachusetts. For the colonists, it was a struggle against unfair taxation. For King George III, it was a full-fledged colonial rebellion against the English crown. In 1776, political activist Thomas Paine clarified the exact nature of the Revolutionary War's meaning in his pamphlet, entitled Common Sense. Payne argued that as long as the colonies were tied to England, no colonist could ever truly feel safe. Payne's common sense quickly re reached the masses as more than half a million copies sold in just a short time. By the spring of that same year, support for a Declaration of Independence had swept through the colonies. In June and early July, a document was drafted, ratified, and signed, declaring American independence from Great Britain. Amen. Praise the Lord for that day. Uh, while many of the Founding Fathers, as well as local militia, uh, considered themselves emancipated from British rule upon signing the Declaration, the document did not reach the King in London until 10 August 1776, for the next seven years, a war for independent sovereignty uh, would rage along the eastern seaboard of the United States, culminating in American victory. Hearing news that Americans considered themselves free from British tyranny, no doubt stunned the English government. However, there was nothing they could do to undo the Declaration of Independence. Similarly, Christ's atoning work on Calvary is the child of God's declaration of independence from the world, the flesh, and the devil. Nothing can take 
away from that trans uh, transaction. Amen. Praise God. Sadly, some Christians still live tied to their former masters when the war for our eternal independence has already been fought and won. My challenge to you today is do not live in the bondage from which you have been saved. Right? <laughs> Amen. Uh, live in the freedom that Christ has given to us. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John eight thirty two, Amen. So, let's live in that uh, declaration of independence. Praise the Lord. And, of course, we are to be dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ to help us and to rule and reign in our lives and help us through those uh, things that we still struggle with in the flesh. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Alright, so that's the end of the topic from the... Boots on the Ground devotional. And now let's go ahead and get into today's hymn. And I was trying to look for an instrumental, but uh, they're all kind of a little slow. And so I'm just going to do this a cappella. Amen. All right, this is one of my favorite hymns here. And this is hymn 95 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And it's titled, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And this is titled, uh, The Faithfulness of God, a Spiritual Song. And this is written by Thomas O. Ch Chisholm, who lived from 1866 to 1960. And then William M. Run Runyon, Runyon uh, not, um, uh, not Dean Runyon, but uh, uh, Runyon, uh, R-U-N-Y-A-N, uh, 1870 to 1957. <clears throat> All right, here we go. It's three stanzas here. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou for ever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin, and a peace that endureth, thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today, and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine, with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. 
Amen. So praise the Lord. Sorry for those off tune there a little bit, but uh, uh, good hymn there. Amen. So that's uh, greatest thy faithfulness. And then let me read you the little uh, um, excerpt down here at the bottom. It says this hymn first appeared in compilation by uh, William Runyon uh, with the tune composed specifically for these words. Mr. Runyon uh, noted this particular poem held such an appeal that I prayed most earnestly that my tune might carry its message in a worthy way. The subsequent history of it, its use indicates that God answers prayer. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. And that is the end of today's hymn. Let me give you the uh, references really quick. Uh, we got stanza one. We got Lamentation 323. Uh, James 1, 17, and then Hebrews 1, 8 through 12. Uh, stanza 2, we have, uh, Genesis 8, 22, and then Psalm 19, 1 through 6, and then Psalm 148. Then stanza 3 is Romans 5, 1, uh, John 16, 13, and Romans 15, 13. And then the refrain, we have, uh, Lamentations 3, 23 again. And then Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. So, amen. All right, so that is the hymn. And tomorrow's hymn will be titled, uh, Faithful is He That Promises, hymn 96. So, put that uh, aside there. And we'll go ahead and sing some scripture songs and wrap it up for today. Amen. So, here we go. All right. So, yesterday... And then today, so yesterday was the ninth. <clears throat> First Timothy four twelve. Let, Let no man despise thy youth, be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Let no man, no man, no man. Let no man despise thy youth. Let no man, no man, no man. Let no man despise thy youth. Let me thou an example of the believers. An example of the believers. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith. In purity, let no man, no man, no man, let no man despise thy youth. Let no man, no man, no man, let no man despise thy youth. Let now an example of the believers, an example of the believers, let no man. No man, no man, despise thy youth. All right, amen. So now we'll conclude with today's. Proverbs 27, 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. That's right. Boast not thyself. Of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Boast not thyself. Of tomorrow, thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Amen. All right, so let's make sure we uh, take heed to that. Amen. All right, so now we'll 
uh, conclude it for today. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and boots on the ground devotionals. So tomorrow will be the 11th. And the passage is from 1 John 1, 7. It says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic for the uh, Baptist bread is going to be titled, Pray or Nothing. And we got two passages here, John 15, 5b, and then Luke 11, 1b. So the second part of verse 5 of John 15, and then the second part of uh, verse 1 of Luke 11. So, amen. And uh, so let's uh, do that. And now I'll get you the Baptist, or the boots on the ground. Uh, one here. So tomorrow the 11th. And tomorrow's uh, topic is titled, Work Until Jesus Comes. And this takes place on August 11, 1972. And the passage is from 1 Corinthians 15.58. Amen. So that's tomorrow's topic for the uh, boots on the ground. And then tomorrow's hymn again will be... The hymn will be uh, titled, Faithful is His Promise, or He That Promises. So, Faithful is He That Promises, hymn 96, in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Amen. And that's available on MelodyPublications.com. So, check that out and order a copy of that if you'd like. And then we got the Scripture Songs uh, book and CDs available on www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. And that's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's uh, website there. And they got their latest prayer letter up. And so pray for them and uh, everything that's going on over there in Port Kaituma, Guyana. Amen. So that's that information. And then the Baptist Bread devotional book is uh, available to order online at www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And then finally, we got the Boots on the Ground devotional book. And this is available on the internet to order. So, amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. So, thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now. Jesus saves. Amen.